Hello everybody, welcome to the Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And uh, today I'm talking about the new album from Nils Fromm, Music for Animals. It's been a minute since I last talked about Nils Fromm, the contemporary classical composer and electronic music producer who's been at it since the mid-2000s, and who frequently combines his solo piano work with occasional minimalistic ambient and electronic crossovers. This guy has made plenty of projects that I've really enjoyed over the years, such as his 2011 album Felt, his 2013 live album Spaces, can also throw in a mention for his 2015 soundtrack to the film Victoria, but really one project towers far above all of them in my eyes, and that's when he released All Melody in 2018. I was initially inspired to look deeper into his work when I saw this album release and end up notching the number one spot on the iTunes electronic charts at the time, even though I'd recognized his name from his appearance on DJ Shadows the Mountain Will Fall, I thought, oh wow, this is not the kind of artist I'm used to seeing charting that high. And I previewed through it a bit, thought it sounded a little like John Hopkins might fall within my reviewing boundaries, and uh, that album ended up becoming one of my absolute favorite projects of the entire year. I listened to the absolute crap out of it throughout 2018. It was probably the most I'd listened to any project that year, even in a year with comebacks from Hybrid and Orbital. All Melody did shrink on me a bit near the end of that year, as I'd personally overplayed it, but coming back to it now, I, st I do still think that project is absolutely stellar, and I stand by all the opinions I gave on it back when I actually reviewed it. I think having a few years of distance from it now has allowed it to grow back on me to my initial level of enjoyment. Now, despite how strongly that album resonated with me upon its release, longtime viewers may have noticed a distinct lack of coverage of any of his subsequent material. Uh, the only other time I've covered from since was going through his B-Sides album, All Encores, for a Some Stuff I Missed segment, and finding it to be a mildly underwhelming mixed bag. But he has been putting out tons of other material since then. It's just that nearly all of it has been old, unreleased archival material. There was Empty, a solo piano album he originally came up with shortly before his Screws album from 2012. There was Grotz, uh, technically his first ever album to be recorded for the Erased Tapes label back in 2009, but only seeing a proper release in 2021. He had three other early period album series releases in Durton, Stride Shellfish, and Electric Piano. Uh, he had a much larger scale archive compilation in Old Friends, New Friends. He had another live album called Tripping with Nils from that contained extended improvisations based on material from All Melody. All the material I've heard from these projects has sounded pretty nice, but none of it felt like review material. That's kind of the thing about an artist like Fromm. While I do enjoy most of his music, the particular way I go about my videos makes his music kind of difficult for me to write about or come up with specific things to say. So much of his music is very minimalistic, and when it's not just solo piano, it can often just focus on one instrument, like low-key synth arrangements or harmonium. That's why All Melody stood out to me as much as it did. There was just so much more variety and instrumentation on that project, and that made it much more innately striking to me than anything else he'd released. And that's also why I'd been mildly intrigued by this most recent project of his, Music for Animals. Not just because it was his first batch of actual new studio material since all encores, but also because of the particular approach he went about making it. While this is very much a fairly straightforward ambient release, it is notable for two specific things. First of all, there's no piano to be found on the album at all. Most of the project focuses entirely on an electronic sound and builds its compositions out of synths and maybe some field recordings, and maybe a stray harmonium here and there. The other notable element of the album is its absolutely massive length, adding up to over three hours. There's only 10 tracks on the album, but they're all very long, stretching anywhere from 13 minutes to 27 minutes, with the sole exception of the lead single, Right, 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 which only stretches on 7 minutes. Now, again, this is still an ambient release above all else. Fromm has described the album as being inspired by being mesmerized by watching something out in nature, like a waterfall or a tree waving around in a storm, and the meditative state one can get in through such an experience. These 10 pieces intentionally don't have much in the way of development or progression. I mean, there's not really a lot of coherent structure or progression to the experience of watching a waterfall, after all. And he says it only demands as much attention as you're willing to give it. That waterfall will always be there, always the same, but also never exactly the same. 
While I assumed this wouldn't necessarily make for a lengthy video, I figured it was probably worth my time to at least give a shot. I do always enjoy me some straightforward ambient material like this every now and then, and given my history of having enjoyed Fromm's previous work, I assumed his style would be able to translate quite well into this particular concept. And yeah, as it turns out, I ended up getting into this project exactly as much as I expected to. Maybe even a little more than I expected. It's an all-around very nice listen from start to finish. Being three hours long is absolutely going to be a big commitment and a lot of time to set aside, though given the particular kind of music this is, I think the album is able to use these extended lengths to its benefit. As advertised, it's the kind of project that works equally as well being played in the background, not really giving it your full attention as it might be if you did actually pay closer attention to it. It might be a bit of a stretch for me to call this album engaging, given how it does appear to be designed with more of a passive listening experience in mind, but I never really felt like the length ever got in the way or like the project's long-windedness ever got tiring. It's entirely an album to zone out to and forget that time exists. And, as is kind of necessary for an album that I've seen fit to do a full video on, I do feel like the ten tracks here all have their own identities apart from each other. The album certainly starts out with its best foot forward in the 26 minute opener, The Dog with a Thousand Faces. Uh, good, does a good job of letting you know exactly what you're getting into in its mix of tranquil pads and plunking synth arpeggios. As promised, it's very calming and meditative, and with just enough evolution to keep things somewhat interesting. Sections where the ambient pads are getting more focus and deliver more emotionally resonant chord progressions, or sections where the underlying synth arpeggios get more focus and have more of a tactile, kalimba-like texture to them. They, they might just be actual Columbus. <laughs> Once again, it's a, the kind of track that is always the same, but also never quite the same through its running time. Pretty much serves as the mission statement on what this entire album is all about and how everything will end up kind of being structured. From there, you can get tracks that are laid out with the same ingredients as this opener, or maybe just some straight ambient cuts with no rhythmic elements. Such as the next two cuts, uh, Muscle Memory and Seagull Scene. Uh, the former is basically a single major keypad going over watery field recordings, and the latter has a bit of a darker and less pleasant tone to its pads with a slight bit more of a sense of subtle movement. I don't know if I can mark any of these cuts as particular favorites in the album, but there aren't any cuts here that feel like they retread the same territory as these, and they're able to stand on their own. You're more likely to run into a cut like Sheep in Black and White that focuses more on the rhythmic synth arpeggios. Although that particular one doesn't feel like it has the same sense of depth or warmth that some of these other cuts do, while it does have some nice sets of improvised minimalistic melodies that put it in similar territory to parts of the title track from All Melody, it can feel maybe a little thin and cold in this context, doesn't build as much as other moments here. This stretch of tracks 2 to 4 is admittedly one of the least interesting parts of the album, but I still wouldn't skip any of these tracks, and it does pick up a decent bit more after that. Stepping Stone at first doesn't seem like much, and its mix is a very light, unaccompanied melodic synth noodling, but by the halfway mark it's eventually turned into a harmonium piece instead. I do like the kind of subtle transition between the two ideas. Briefly, ironically the longest strike in the bunch at 27 minutes was probably my favorite cut in the bunch, as all its light synth arpeggios felt like they underscored a lot of different varied melodic synths on top, ranging from some tones that resembled flutes to other melodic percussion, again like kalimbas and bells, to other warmer synth noodling, and all the chords and melodies it does explore do create one of the most emotive and welcoming sense of melancholy compared to any other track on this album. The following track Right 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 could act as a direct companion to Briefly, a contrast in terms of its length being 20 minutes shorter, and the shortest track in the bunch as mentioned earlier. But it also features a very similar set of light synth arpeggios driving a similar steady beat, while also featuring all these pads of what sound like old orchestral recordings that have a particular aching sadness to them a la William Basinski. World of Squares explores some much more menacing tones with round, wiry bass lines, tense pads, and light but somber airy melodies, possibly acting as the album's darkest and most unnerving moment, albeit still being alluring in its own right anyways. And that cut is contrasted with Lemon Day, which is built out of a lot of similar ingredients but conveys a much more hopeful and welcoming mood, sticking to another bed of arpeggios with lots of waves of pads going over it that seem to deliver these simple, thoughtful chords that seem mild unresolved but also aren't in need of ever reaching that resolution, like deep rhetorical questions that don't have an answer and perhaps don't need one. And finally, the album closes in a semi-predictable way with Do Dream, a 22-minute meander through solo harmonium performances. 
Uh, I'll admit, uh, Fromm's Harmonium pieces of this particular nature haven't always done all that much for me. Harmonium in the Well from All Encores comes to mind as one that, eh, that one is okay. Uh, but this cut's meanderings, while maybe not as interesting as other moments here, does feel like a suitable and fitting way for this album to eventually close out. And the piece, as minimalistic as it is, never feels outright directionless or like it's just stagnating in the same place the entire time. But uh, yeah, that's everything on Music for Animals. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you this is like one of my favorite albums of the year. The need to set aside three hours for it alone is gonna make for the replay value an open question. But in spite of that seemingly demanding length, I wouldn't say this was a demanding listen at all. As advertised, it only demands as much focus out of you as you actually want to give it, providing just barely enough evolution and texture for those wishing to pay more attention, but still primarily just setting out to create this very meditative and naturalistic atmosphere to calm your mood while meant as maybe something to listen to more passively. And I do think he perfectly nailed that mood he was going for and made all of these pieces feel like their own interconnected but self-contained environments. It won't be for everyone, not that Fromm's music ever has been, but it's definitely one of the better straight ambient releases I've heard in 2022, and one of the best projects I've heard from Fromm since All Melody. And if you're in the mood for some straight ambient material, I'd definitely recommend giving it a shot. I'm overall feeling a 7.5 out of 10 on this. But of course, this is just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there. Shout out to my Patreon supporters, they're awesome people. You want to add yourself to that list, link to my Patreon is in the description. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time.